First, a quick shout out to 60 Helmets. 60 Helmets is dedicated to the relentless pursuit of brain protection. 60's patented Omni directional suspension technology provides protection capabilities unmatched by any other helmet design. All right, guys, we've got our Unadilla National River Creek that has made its way. River, creek, stream, whatever you want to call it, kiddie pool here at the Media Center. So let's jump in. Hey guys, Mitch Kendra here from Race Rocks Online. Welcome to the Unadilla National First Look Video Preview. Obviously, press day riding has been canceled because of the rain we're getting from the leftover hurricane as it moves its way north. So the track's in a pretty rough condition right now. We've had a lot of rain here for a couple of hours and it's gonna happen well into the night. Luckily, we're not expecting rain tomorrow, although these track conditions are gonna be pretty rough for the morning. We're gonna see how it shakes out. So without any press day riding today, we did talk to some riders during media activities. And we got some interviews, uh, a couple of things to note. Again, Ken Roxon is racing, making his pro motocross season debut. Cole Nichols is making his season debut as well on the Suzuki Twisted T team. Shane McRath has jumped from the HEP Suzuki Twisted T team to the Mad Parts Kawasaki team. Garrett Marchbanks is making his return to the Pro Soccer Kawasaki team. There's lots of storylines to get into. Hunter Lawrence is also racing the 2025 Honda CRF 450R this weekend and the final two promoter cross races as him and Jet Lawrence will transition into racing that bike for the final three SMX races this summer. So let's get into it. All right, Shane, uh, some changes since last time we saw you. Talk about how everything happened and what's going on now this weekend. Yeah, it's been uh, a quick change. Um, yeah, really, everything's happened really this week. Um, or everything has has changed within this week. So, um, yeah, it's been, uh, for how much of a whirlwind it's been, it's been a really smooth process. Um, I got on the bike, um, Monday and Tuesday, that was the first time I rode it, and the the madparts.com Kawasaki team, they were really leaving the ball in my court as far as like, what do you want to do? Um, my deal right now is for the last three outdoors and for the three SMX rounds. Yeah, they, they were like, we can race whenever you want to race. Um, and so I was waiting until I rode the bike to make that decision. Um, Monday and Tuesday, I rode the bike. I was really impressed. We, I literally didn't touch the bike at all, just spent two days riding. And we seen the weather for this weekend, and so it's like, there's no reason that we, we don't go race. So um, I just, I can't believe how, how well the transition has been and how smooth it's been. Um, yeah, the madparts.com, MX for Christ Kawasaki team, they, they've really uh, uh, opened their arms for me, and it's been, uh, it's been a big blessing. And, I'm telling you, I'm I'm super excited. And so you've kind of been bouncing around. You've been on the Club MX for a couple yeah. rides. Like, just yeah. how do you manage like so much? I guess change and yeah. adapting and just having to roll with the punches on it, kind of. Yeah, uh, I mean, honestly, that's that's really where my faith comes in. It's like I I've learned that uh, well, one, I've got to meet a lot of different people. Two, we're all sinful. We all make mistakes, and so. Um, learning how to engage with different people on different teams and that's something that I've really enjoyed um, I try I I almost it's a challenge getting to know people you meet somebody and they're they're like pretty reserved it's like okay what makes this guy tick and how, how do I how do I get more out of him and that's something I've really enjoyed doing um, but yeah I mean the the last four rounds I did with Club MX a couple years ago that was um, something I thought about was like, well, I've switched really quick and went straight to racing before. Um, it's not something I'm afraid of. I know how that transition went and it was it was maybe more uh, scrambled than this one was um, just because there were no prior talks with club before that. It was just like, hey, uh, we can do this. And um, it was just kind of thrown together. But this one, it's like, it was it was last minute, but they're they've been racing. They had everything together. They they had two riders earlier in the year, and now they've been down to one. So um, everything was in line for them to just have another bike on the line. It was just putting the time on the bike. And uh, this week, I, I was I was really trying to take it slow, just like making sure I didn't rush into it. Um, I wanted to I wanted to be ready. And after two days on the bike, I'm like, dude, I there's no reason why we shouldn't go race because I don't know what I would change right now. Um, Freddie's been racing this stuff and it's like, I like it, so let's go. 
it's good to be back. You know, it's uh, when you when you're on the couch weekend after weekend healing, it, it gets a little boring. So uh, expectation wise, honestly, I'm not sure. I, I really don't know. You know, I've been riding with Justin, which is a good comparison. You see, he's been doing really well, and uh, we've been we've been close. So uh, we'll see. I think for me, just having two solid motos. If I can creep into that top five, I'd be stoked. Um, but overall, just get two solid motos, see where we're at. Uh, it will be my first race with the Monster Energy Star Racing Team outdoors. So I'm sure we might have a, a few adjustments to make, but um, overall, just stoked to be back here. And I'm sure like three big pictures, probably SMX, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I know last year, like you came at SMX, you really wanted to make a difference. You really didn't. It was kind of subpar for you. Is this the goal of these three? Just like, all right, let's really hit full stride for coming into SMX this year? Yeah, I think for me it's get gate drops, right? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, my thumb's good and we've healed and everything like that. It's still not 100%, but um, I think it's mainly to get the gate drop, shake the nerves, you know, just just get to know the speed again because um, these guys are hauling butt. And so, like, just to, to be in the mix that way when Charlotte comes, I've had gate drops, I know what to expect. I think last year at SMX we saw it was a bit more motocrossy at some of them, so I think to have a... I already have obviously a great supercross base, but um, to get a motocross base and kind of be able to go between settings if needed for SMX will be huge. And so, yeah, it'll be good. And, you know, if I can have some great results in these last three, then that's even better. Yeah, and then real quick, what was it like to go back to Loretta's and just see all that again? Yeah, it's always, I enjoy Loretta's. You know, I know a lot of people have mixed emotions about it, but I love going back to, uh, to be with all the Yamaha Blue Crew guys, hang out, see all the PW riders. It was really cool. And, good racing as always you see that next generation coming up and uh had some good memories there and then obviously you fought to the end to the supercross championship and you're dealing with the summary are you, are you fully like are you 100 percent back yet are you you kind of know like are you 90 percent like where's the thumb at now do you know or is it tough uh, to say until tomorrow yeah i think from a from an injury side of things i mean when you look at like a timeline uh tomorrow would be like 12 weeks i think so from the injury itself it's back um but it's still getting sore, honestly. Uh, but it, but it's the last two weeks have been really good. I've been able to do 35s no problem and hold on and um, not worry about honestly my hand like blowing off the bars. That was kind of crazy. I mean, it was in Supercross I was able to manage it pretty well, uh, but outdoors was a lot harder on it. The bumps, the square edge, the holding on to those high speeds was was tougher on it. So I, I think for me I'm healthy enough, but. I'm hoping, like I said, that everything's timing-wise should put me 100% for SMX. Now, obviously, this is a little bit of ways away, but looking for maybe next year for Pro Motocross. I know you're going to be yeah. in, the, uh, in the fight for Supercross, and we kind of heard you mention like you want to be a Pro Motocross guy as well. Yeah, no, no doubt. And that's, like I said, if I can come out here and do these last three, get some experience, the goal is to race them all for, for next year. So like to, to be able to have a strong outdoor season next year would be great. And like I said, if I can come in and have some great results, uh, these last three then then that's just even better um, but yeah I think the bottom line is just getting those gate drops you know getting getting time with the team learning the bike outdoors it's it's just a win-win for all of us really. All right, Phil last home race yeah. so a couple more rounds ago is it starting to hit you this is coming down to the end here or what? Yeah no uh, obviously Unibiller because I've been coming here since I was seven on the other side of the valley so for me it's it's pretty surreal um, Kind of sad, kind of happy. I'm not going to miss the, the roost here at Dilla, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. Obviously, today puts a little damper on some things. But, um, yeah, pretty surreal. End is near. Happy so, and sad. Yeah, so what was uh, your break like from uh, after Washougal? I grinded. Uh, yeah, I rode yeah, both weeks, put in my time. Because uh, I haven't really been able to log time during the week because I hurt my knee, obviously, in Hangtown. So during the week, it's been kind of hard. So um, this is the first time where I didn't have to recover for a weekend. So just nice to stack some 30s. Uh, my training partner, Freddie Norman, and I logged some serious time. Uh, Sabachi came up, Zacha was there. So it was good. I went to Loretta's for a day, um, drank some beer, had some espresso martinis. <laughs> Got blitzed a couple nights, you know. <laughs> Ripper, Ripper's a bad influence, but uh, no, it was fun. I uh, I enjoyed it. So, but I'm happy to be home. Happy to hang out with my family. So it's just a grind. We haven't had much time, you know, to relax. So it's good to be able to come back and chill. And we shared those old photos of you that guy sent in. Yeah. You know, going back to the runners is it bringing back all the memories, like you and your dad, and just you know, walk us through everything, like going yeah. full circle. And yeah. Whatnot. No, it's uh, it's 
kind of wild, like, you know, being back at Loretta's and seeing all the kids on 60s and 80s and putting that, you know, a lot of money goes into it, you know what I mean? And the parents are super dedicated and the kids are too, but you don't really realize it, you know, especially for me until like now, it's just like a long time, a lot of race and a lot of time gets dedicated to uh, two wheels and dirt bikes. So um, to see it come full circle and to eventually go back to Loretta's, hopefully two years uh, with a lot less pressure. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I enjoy it now a lot more than I did 15 years ago. But, uh, it just comes with maturity, I guess, but it's still pretty badass. All right, and then coming here, do you put hand guards on your bike with the rocks or no? I hate hand guards, <laughs> so I don't wear a roost guard either, never have. Hand guards are overrated, so um, no. I, if a mechanic puts it on, I get pissed. You know, <laughs> take them back off. Take them back off. So right. I'm not a, not a fan, never have been. Anything else you like to add heading into the weekend? No, I'm just, uh, yeah, I don't know. You're going to do some cool stuff. Grand Marshall for tomorrow. Um, autographs here in a little bit, too, autographs right? Autographs here in a little bit. I don't know how it's going to turn out with the rain, but um, yeah, for me, it's like I said, to, to be on this side of the valley from a seven year old kid, it, it means a lot. So um, I'm grateful for everyone and everyone that's been a part of it. Um, I got one set of shoes here, so I haven't got any gum boots. So, you know. <laughs> all right. So, uh, breaks in Swashugal. What has it been like for you? Recovery process. Kind of just walk us through it all. Yeah. So it's been good. The two weekends off went by really, really fast. Actually, as it always does. But it was good, man. Got to do some work on the farm. Obviously, done a lot of tests to evaluate my body, my head, everything. Uh, from those the red bud situation and just the wear and tear of the season so that was really good to go through and evaluate get some direction on what we need to do to improve that and stuff so that was good my wife got me two donkeys for my birthday so <laughs> had my birthday jet's birthday two days ago um, so yeah it was good good little uh refresher i guess you could say and then uh, you got your guys re racing the new bike right yeah so what walk us through what that process has been like testing that bike riding that bike and then the decision to make to go race it. So I think the easiest decision was riding the production bike at the farm and and just loving it. And how much potential the stock bike had was the biggest ultimate uh, telling tale of what what our game plan was for whether it was SMX or here. And man, the stock bike is unreal. You know, I was doing some motos on it and my lap times and speed on the stock bike with a were the same as, as my current, or the current factory bike we had. So, you know, that, let alone, is just a huge confidence booster and you're like, okay, what a base to then build on. So, yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. Hopefully the weather clears up. Like, be good to see it stretch its legs a little bit on some dry course, but um, she's a beast in the mud as well, so. And then you mentioned kind of recovery. Do you feel like you're back to 100%, I guess, after the break? I know you said it went by kind of quick, but I guess where you're at kind of with, you know, hitting your head and just, Everything yeah. going on, a long yeah. season. No, we're not 100%, but, you know, it's tough to come back at 100% like you enter the season on, gee, what, race week 29 or 26 or whatever we're on, you know, like, uh, it's a long season and it has a good wear and tear on the body, but we're in a better place, so, yeah, we're looking forward to the last week. And has it been, obviously, you've done pretty well, has it been, like, as tough as you thought it would be doing all, you know, all 17 Supercross races, like, the full year, has that been as tough as it did you expect it or kind of, you know, walk us through like what you expected and how it's going so far? I wouldn't say it's, no, it's not been like easier than I expected or tougher than I expected. I feel like every race is a tough race because you're pushing to your absolute limit. You know, everyone is. So it's, uh, that's one thing that's different about racing to practice, you know, like practice, you can push to your limit, but racing brings that next level. So. Um, I definitely don't underestimate how it's been and obviously the level is extremely high. You've seen in Supercross and Outdoors, the level get picked up, I believe. So um, it's good. I'm just happy to be here, be in the fight and uh, progress throughout the year. And then we got to ask you, Drew Adams had a really good week at Loretta's. Yep, yep. Were you guys watching it? Were you pumped on it? Just you know, walk yeah. us through uh, his I, week. Mate, the, uh, what's the word? The real underlying champion was Jacob Hayes, 25 <laughs> plus yeah. champion uh, on a stocker with a pipe. That was that was uh, awesome to watch. But yeah, we were monitoring it. We were watching, obviously. Burner, his trainer, we're there at the farm with him every day and Chance. And so we, yeah, we watched. We had a young Aussie kid, Heath Fisher, who unfortunately, bad 
I think he got T-boned and, and had to have surgery just back in Australia on his arm. So that was a bit unfortunate, but he was doing really well up until that point. And uh, yeah, you know, some of the other boys, so. And then uh, heading into this weekend, anything else you'd like to add? Hurricane Debbie, Tropical Storm Debbie. I mean, uh, it's kind of a talking topic the past week, right? So. <laughs> Any handguards on the bike this weekend or no? No. No, no handguards. All right. All right, Nick, so a little break after Washougal. Walk us through what that was like for you. Yeah, the break was uh, much needed. Uh, I took a full week off after Washougal. I didn't ride, didn't train, just full reset, which I needed it pretty bad. And then, uh, you know, the last two weeks have been, honestly, like the best two weeks of riding all summer. Uh, that break was much needed. Uh, kind of just reset my brain, my mind, my body. Um, so, yeah, the last two weeks have been really good. I've been super stoked. I've made a lot of gains, and uh, we'll see what we can do tomorrow. And I guess, where would you kind of rate your results? Like, I know you come back from so many injuries and stuff, yeah. like such a long time off. Where would you kind of rate your season, your results this year? Uh, rank it 1 to 10. I'd give it like a 5. It's I know I could be better. Uh, I know it could have gone a lot worse. So I'm just taking it. I told myself at the beginning of the season, like, this is a rebuilding year. Like, whatever happens, happens. Obviously, I want to get good results, but... Man, I need experience. I need a baseline of, of a full season. Like, I've been hurt so much the last two years to where it's like, you don't realize how much you lose when you're hurt until you're hurt. So, uh, yeah, I just been doing my thing. Obviously, the results have been up and down. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking to finish these last three and then SMX on a strong note. And then being, how far are you from, like, growing up around here? Like, uh, where are you growing uh, up? Sorry. I'm, like, three and a half hours. So, I fly home every year before at Unadilla. And, like, I was home all day yesterday. Saw some friends and family. Like, hung out. And I actually drove up here this morning. So, it, it's it's nice being back in New York. So, do you feel, like, kind of added pressure to do well here? Like, knowing you're going to be, like, home crowd kid? and No, it's not added pressure. It's honestly, I don't know what it is. Like, the fans and just knowing I'm in New York. Like, dude, I just strive off that. Like, it's something that fuels me and, and makes me better like at least in 2022 I had a really good weekend and uh, yeah like even or in 2022 my year wasn't going great but then I came here and I had an insane weekend so like I don't know I think it's just being with the boys my family my friends my cousins like I just have so many people here so I don't want to let them down but uh, yeah hoping to do the same tomorrow yeah feeling good um, ankle uh, made a lot of progress and uh, yeah just just chilled and you know and enjoyed the time off with the lads and yeah, had a good time. Rode for the first time since Washougal uh, Thursday last week, and uh, it was good. A little rusty for sure, but no, it was good. Rode this week, felt really good, and yeah, excited to go race in the mud, go play in the mud. It's going to be good. I know it was probably, it felt probably quick, but two weeks, were you able to, like, do you feel like you're 100% again, or I guess I don't know where you at, feel like physically? Um, the rest of my body for sure. My ankle is not quite there yet, but that's good enough to go ride at 100%, so. Yeah, gonna go give them my all tomorrow and you know, try to win. So. And then knowing you kind of deal with like a foot injury and this place gets really deep and rutted, like are you gonna, I guess, change any approach to your riding style? Just maybe feet on the pegs more or anything like that? Or? Yeah, I mean, obviously feet on the pegs is the safest way for me. So I think riding wise, that's gonna be the way to go and keep him in good balance. So yeah, I think do my thing tomorrow, I'll be fine. And then you were battling in there, uh, obviously the ankle injury and some stuff hindered you. I guess where are you at, like heading into these final three? Like you still want to make a dig, a big, like a uh, fight to race wins, to win races and stuff. But, like where's, where are you at mentally, like heading into these last three? Yeah, I'd go out and win all three of them. I mean, whether it's a podium or a fifth, like the goal is still to win. So yeah, gonna go out and give it my all these last three. And then handguards on your bike this weekend or no? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, busting out the handguards first time this year, so it's gonna be sick. And then uh, we got to ask you, uh, Drew Adams, Luke Loretta's. Were you guys watching that, keeping tabs on him down at the dog count plan? Yeah, we were, we were watching him throughout the week. Uh, yeah, I wasn't riding at all, so I was just watching every day in the gym. And uh, yeah, proud of, proud of the guy. He's, he's doing really good right now, and uh, he's up to Canada this weekend. So hopefully he can pull off a title up there and bring it back to the dog pound. So it'll be sick. Oh, my summer's been pretty good. Obviously, uh, the injury just took a lot longer, or it was a lot bigger deal than I thought. Not that I needed surgery, but. The problem with the tibia plateau is you just can't weight bear it for a long time. So um, I was on crutches for about nine weeks and I stopped everything, every training. I wanted to, you know, use the time as well to just kind of let everything go a little bit and kind of recoup. So um, kind of, you know, when I first started back up, your fitness, like after that long, it was tough. You know, you start back from zero and, um, you know, I'm not where I want to be, obviously. Like I just, I want to get some gate drops in. I want to be stronger and fitter, but... I also did everything I possibly could to, to, to get myself as ready as possible. So 
it'll just be interesting. Um, obviously, the, the weather is, I normally embrace the rain. Maybe not ideal with a knee injury coming back, you know, there's a lot more unpredictable uh, putting your leg down and stuff like that. But it is what it is. I'm just really excited to get a gate drop in. And I take this as a super, uh, super fun event. It's in general one of my favorite tracks to race. And, uh, but yeah, my summer's been good and it's just, I've been putting in my work. And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting where I stack up tomorrow. What's it like coming back to a track that, I mean, it doesn't guarantee you're going to do well, but again, it's like good vibes here, kind of, you know, everybody's excited to have you back and just be back at the races. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is one of my favorite tracks to race. Um, but also, I haven't came back from an injury in, in, you know, 2018. Like, it's been a long time, right? So I did start a little bit from zero last year. I, I never really stopped training. I kept doing my thing a little bit and then showed up to high. When I showed up to high point, I think I was a lot more ready than I even thought. Because I didn't have to come back from an injury. I was fit, I was strong, and then, um, you know, I've ridden a dirt bike a long time, so even if I have a couple of days or whatever, um, I can figure it out somehow. Now, this is a little bit different coming back from an injury. I'd love to be fitter, I'd love to be stronger, and running a bit of a different setup too, which is not proven. You know, you gotta go out, but then it's muddy. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things going on, but at the same time, like once the gate drops, it doesn't really matter. And uh, we're just gonna go for as long as we can, as fast as we can. And uh, yeah. Uh, it's gonna be a good time though. I, I do miss uh, as much as nice as it is to be away and, and do your own thing. You just can't let it go. You know? we, we love racing and we love working out and uh, quite frankly, love being miserable when it comes to training. You know, what I mean, it's just part of it. I say. So when's the last time you even rode a 250F? Like, it's the a last good time question. you raced has probably been what? May. 13, so I, I probably uh, when it comes to the racing side of things, yes, 2013, and then Suzuki was 2010. So it's been a long time, and then. I probably swung a leg over a 250 in Supercross for a lap and a half or two um, back in the day when I was still on Honda and when Jet was on 250s and stuff. But like two laps, that doesn't really count, you know. You need to spend a couple of days on a bike to, or a day on a bike to really be like, hey, I rode a 250, you know. So I don't know. Interesting one. All right, so Garrett, new team, same team from a couple years ago. Just walk us through uh, the changes that we've seen uh, since the last time we saw you. Yeah, it's been definitely interesting. Uh, you know, got terminated, I don't know, three weeks ago on a Tuesday after Millville, made the truck back home, um, got home that Sunday after Washougal, and was just kind of chilling on the couch, hanging out with some friends and some family. And uh, yeah, luckily that Thursday after Washougal, got a call from Mitch, and yeah, I was told to come out that Monday to start prepping. So hurry and packed a couple things in some boxes, threw it in my truck, and drove from Utah to California. And, yeah, I started the ride of the bike Monday. And so this contract's been, I guess, done. It's for next year, for 2025, but you're starting a couple months early. So this is kind of, you didn't know this was how it's going to happen, but you knew this is where you were, where you were going to end up for next year at least. Yeah, I was happy that I had the deal done already and uh, knew I was going to be there already for 25. But yeah, I'm thankful for Mitch and the whole team for allowing me to come on early after the whole deal that happened. Um, yeah, got five days on the bike, feel super good on it already. Um, yeah, no, I'm just excited. Bike feels great and ready for this weekend, even though it might be a mother. <laughs> All right, and then, uh, yeah, first time on the bike again, what was that like? And just what was it like being back with the team, the, you know, the mechanics is everybody just, what did it feel like? Was it weird? Like, just walk us through that. Man, it, it, it was crazy because the first two laps, it was kind of like, the first few corners, I was just like, man, this feels weird. And then all of a sudden it like gelled right back with me. They had all the old settings that I was on and um, some of the stuff was similar, some stuff was different. And uh, no, I felt just like it was back. I was back at home on the bike and I was super pumped for that. The chassis fits me really well. Uh, the bike's super good. It turns super good. Suspension's great. Motor package is great. Um, yeah, I'm just pumped to be back with them and uh, yeah. You're kind of bouncing around 250 between Supercross and 450 Outdoors. Is it good to just know like, hey, I've got some unfinished business on the 250, I'm going back for it. And like, you just know you're locked in for the 250 or, you know, I guess what was it like kind of bouncing back and forth between bikes? Um, it was definitely different. I think the year prior, it made it a lot easier just doing that. So I never really had a hard time, you know, one day riding Supercross in the lights bike and the next day it was Outdoors. I never really had a hard time. It'd take me literally a lap or two and I was right back at it. But now just going back to the 250 on the outdoors it, it took me about a day or two to kind of find the gearing and where it was at just because the 450 is so much different that's all i was riding for the last month um but now i i feel like i've got it pretty down pretty solid um yeah i don't know i feel comfortable i think we'll get more comfortable as it as the races go on and now as these motos go